Welcome to chapter 5.1. We've got three sections in chapter 5. It all deals with probability and um, probability rules and what else? Uh, Venn diagrams, chance, conditional probability, and independence. All sorts of fun stuff. So let's start off with uh, randomness, probability, and simulation. And simulation is a very specific thing. It's a four-step process. Um, and this is uh, definitely an FRQ concept right there. So Moving forward, um, in this particular section 5.1 or 5.8, we should be able to interpret probability of a long run relative frequency and use simulation to model chance behavior. And this is a very specific, again, it's very detailed, how do I do it? And when we're talking about this in terms of free response questions, you need to be as detailed as possible when doing these types of questions. And we've got, a, I've got an example um, for us that I will flag it in that moment to be like, hey, this is definitely um, kind of a question that could easily be uh, attributed to an FRQ. So the law of large numbers says if we observe more and more repetitions of any chance process, the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches a single value. Fun, long, formal definition. I'll talk about what it means in just a second. But the real definition that we want to focus on here is probability. Um, it is an out, any outcome of a chance process is a number between zero and one. And so that's really that probability you guys are used to. I have a one in seven chance of succeeding on this, or I have a one in 50 chance of grabbing the, this color marble from a jar. You guys know that as probability. A probability of zero means there is no chance of it occurring. Um, but how do we understand the law of large numbers? Let's go to something that we understand very easily. Let's go to a coin toss, which is exactly what those two graphs are behind my little character is doing. And what it is is, so let's say I flip a coin and how many, what is my probability of getting heads? And you would tell me you have a one in two chance or a 50, 50 chance of um, getting a heads, heads, or, heads or tails, depending on which one you're looking at. And so let's say we're talking about just heads because that's what these um, graphs are talking about. So at the beginning, I might get heads Heads and then tails and then tails and then tails and then heads and then heads and then tails, whatever. I'm it just it's all sorts of chaos. And as you can see at the beginning, oops, at the beginning of our um, graph, you can see we've got some some chaos going on here. It looks all over the place. And at the beginning of this graph, it's all over the place again with those tosses. But as you can see, as I get to a very large number, huh? Interesting. A very large number, part of that law of large numbers, our proportion becomes 0.5. It evens out about here. So what they're saying is over the course of lots and lots and lots and lots of repeti repetitions, we actually get to see the true behavior that occurs from that probability that you calculated for yourself. One in two chances, 0.5. And so it occurs when you do repetition, huge number of times. But because of this law of large numbers, we end up with some myths. And so I want to, well, they, but also I want to address those really quickly. Um, there's two myths that we want to talk about, the short run regularity. And so that's, you know, well, if there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to get heads and I've gotten tails numerous times, then of course I'm heads must be next. This is the, the myth of short run regularity that you believe that because you know what the rule and law is becoming. You assume that it must occur um, and, and you forget that random phenomena is part of predictability. So thinking of this in terms that you would understand, I'm taking a multiple choice exam and every answer is B. Question one is B and question two is B and question three is B. And I get to question four and five and I'm like, oh my God, there's still B. And I know my teacher probably randomized these answers. So how are they all B? Did I make a mistake? The reality of it is, is I can run a random number generator or a random uh, answer generator and I can get what we call a short run, a bunch of Bs in a row. And that's okay. That's still part of randomness. That is still the chaos of randomness. R runs can occur, but I can't predict. I can't say, well, if these are all Bs, my next question better not be B. You as a student know that that's not how multiple choice tests work. The answer is simply the answer, whatever pattern is occurring on my answer bubble sheet. All right. Uh, the myth of the law of averages. So uh, probability tells us random behavior evens out in the long run. We know that, but our future outcomes cannot be affected by past behavior. Where we see the law of averages occur really often is what we call the hot streak in gambling or wherever else you might see that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I 
I won three times in a row. I must be on a hot streak. I'm going to win again or vice versa. I just won six times in a row. This table's over. They, they, there's no more wins left at this table, but it's got to be a loss is coming next. That would be the law of averages um, that you're using inappropriately. It doesn't work that way. Uh, another place that is a silly little joke. I don't know if this is a real story or if it's just to, to make this um, comic strip make sense. But so the law of averages doesn't guarantee me a girl after seven straight boys, but can't I at least get a group discount on the delivery fee? So this little story goes that uh, a woman comes in and she's, she's had girl after girl after girl and the doctor is like okay you've had seven straight girls theoretically the law of averages say that the next one it should be a boy because you've had seven girls so the next one better be a boy well guess what baby number eight was still a girl and so the law of average, <coughs> excuse me, the law of averages can can trick us into thinking that past behavior can influence the future. But the reality of it is, is it doesn't work that way. So myths about randomness that I wanted to just um, pause for a moment and talk about. So let's get into simulation. Simulation is a very specific way to uh, model <coughs> chance behavior. I'm sorry, there's something stuck in my throat. <coughs> sorry. Uh, simulation is a way to model chance behavior and it takes four steps to do it. You first state, plan, do, and conclude. Um, and so you can read about this or you can check your textbook about this. Uh, we have done simulations every one of our experiments uh, so far where we had uh, dice or random numbers or calculator for random numbers or anything like that. Um, we can use that for simulations and we've done those in the past. But let's go ahead and do two simulations very quickly together. This first simulation is dealing with table D in the back of your textbook. So if you're following along in class with a textbook um, that's in that back under your after the, the formulas and everything and it looks like this. Okay, so there's our table D and I've got a little snippet of it, but you know, if you're not near a table or whatever, you can either Google it or you can uh, just follow along real quick. So at a local high school, 95 students have permission to park on campus. Each month, the student council holds a golden ticket parking lottery at a school assembly. The two lucky winners are given reserved parking spots next to the school's main entrance. Last month, the winning tickets were drawn by a student council member from the AP statistics class. When both golden tickets went to members of the same class, some people thought the lottery had been rigged. There are 28 students in your AP statistics class, all of whom are eligible to park on campus. So design and carry out a simulation to decide whether it's plausible that the lottery was carried out fairly. So state, plan, do, conclude. Let's do those. What is the probability that a fair lottery would result in two winners from the same AP statistics class? Plan. We're going to use the table of random digits. Um, we're also going to do another simulation using the calculator's integer, uh, rand integer thing, but we never really got to use the table D, and I know that it's going to show up on the AP exam potentially under the FRQ section, so I did want to just showcase really quickly how we use this. So I'm going to plan. And if this was a free response question, this is one of the most important steps right here because if my plan written out cannot be recreated with all of the steps accounted for without any you know assumption inference or anything it was 100 percent clear then that's a good free response question if you've left anything for me to figure out for myself that's a bad answer and you're going to lose some points so i want you to notice how detailed this plan already is so all these steps are very detailed since there are 95 eligible students in the lottery we'll label the students in the ap statistics class already so many details are included we'll label the students from 0, 01 to 28 and the remaining students from 29 to 95 so i didn't just say label the students from 1 to 95 i was very specific Numbers from 96 to 00 will be skipped. Again, very specific. We're specific. We're skipping those because there are only 95 eligible students. So we're not leaving that up to our imagination. We're saying it clearly. Moving from left to right across the row. Again, I'm saying very clearly how I'm using table D, the table of random digits. We'll look at pairs of digits. Detail. Pairs. We'll look at pairs of digits until we come across two different labels from 01 to 95. The two students with these labels will win the prime parking spaces. We will record whether both winners are members of the AP statistics class using yes or no. This 
is a very well written and well thought out plan because it doesn't leave anything to my imagination. I know exactly how to run this plan. So I go, here's the do. Let's perform many repetitions. We'll use the table starting at line 139. Why line 31 and 39? It's random. I could have put uh, in the back of our textbook, we have lines 101 to 150. I can put that into a random number generator and grab a random number again. I can just put point my finger and pick a random line. It doesn't matter. We just picked a random line at 139. It could have come from a random number generator though. So I'm looking at line 139. The digits are shown below and that's what this is right here. There's line 139. And this is what we're going to eventually do is separate them out. I was just giving you a preview of both what it looks like in your table and what it's going to look like on our um, experiment. So here I have, this is line 139, but I've split them into two digit numbers because that's what we're using, 0, 1 through 95 or two digit numbers. So here, 55 and 58. Uh, this is repetition one. No, because none of those are our AP statistics students. 89.94, not our AP students. Uh, four is an AP student, but 70 is not. So that's a no we, where we don't get both of them AP students. 70 and 84 are non-AP students. 10 is an AP student. 98 is outside parameters. So I skip it. So it's not 10 and 98. It's actually 10 and 43. But in order to you know, have transparency, I'm going to write 98 as a skipped value. Uh, so repetition five, again, has not two AP students. 5335, not two AP students. 6934, not two AP students. 4839, 40. So at this point, in the first nine repetitions, no winners have ever been from the AP statistics class. And we know that because those numbers would have been from one to, I think it was 28 or 26, right? Uh, we can check. 20, 28, there are 28 students. Okay, um, but let's keep going because we're not just going to do nine repetitions. We're going to do, I think, 50 total, um, but we can, you know, keep on showing. So here's repetition 10 through 18. And here you can see 19 and 20 were both selected. This would have been an instance where two AP students got selected at random. Here we have no, 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 no. Here's another yes, no, here's another yes. And again, this is just using the table of random numbers. They are already randomized. So in just 18 repetitions, I've already got three instances where two AP students could have been selected at the same exact time. So uh, if we kept on going, and I think they did, they did, they did a total 50 of repetitions, they got a total of five yeses and 45 noes. Well, so do you think that it was fair? If five different instances of random numbers gave me two AP students winning the golden ticket lottery at the same time, then is it plausible? I would say yes, one in every 10 times the student council holds the golden ticket, it'll happen just by chance, so it does seem plausible. So that would be a good concluding sentence. Well, let's look at an example where there's not. <laughs> Hi, Mr. McCusker. Uh, let's look at an example where there's not. And so for this one, just very quickly, I have a TI inspired tutorial um, and so if you need that link here it is but I'm, I've already grabbed the important information so we had an issue uh, uh, I don't know a month ago where we tried to use the TI inspire to uh, randomly pull values I did some checking and what happened why we got all the same values is because we didn't reseed our computer um, the calculators computer and so this is how you reseed so if you're using the TI inspire reseed it first pick a random set of numbers. As you can see, if I, uh, the calculator starts with one, two, three, four, five. So everybody's random numbers are the same because you're in seed one, two, three, four, five. So if I plug in any other four or five digit number, my seed changes. So my random numbers change. That's why true random number generators don't actually exist as of yet. Um, and then this is how you use a uh, random integer. You can either type in the phrase rand int with a parentheses, or you can go to menu five one, which are uh, your probability, no, sorry, menu five, uh, da, 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 number four, random. Yeah, menu five one, menu five four. Okay, so when you go there, you plug in all this information, blah, you have it. So with ours, we would be doing this question. In an attempt to increase sales, a breakfast cereal company decides to offer a NASCAR promotion where you get collectible cards of these following NASCAR drivers. A fan buys a bunch of boxes because she wants to collect all of her driver's cards, but she's surprised when it takes 23 boxes to get a full set. Should she be surprised? So let's create our simulation. Let's state, plan, do, and conclude. So we stated 
you know, uh, is it fair? That's part of the problem. What is the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of five NASCAR collectible cards? Let's put uh, each person as a number. And then what we're going to do is use the rand int one through five. And that's this little symbol right here. Please don't forget to reseed before you do this. Pick any four or five digit number and you would have have it reseeded. Why we can't do rand int and then one comma five and a number to, to purposely create a bunch is because we're trying to actually see what number we would have gotten in that serial box. So let's see this simulation. And again, we're gonna simulate it 50 times. However, just for posterity, I already simulated it for you a few different times. So it took nine boxes to get a full set. It took 16 boxes to get a full set, 10 boxes to get a full set, and, 20, uh, and then 15, and then 22 boxes. So this is just the first few simulations. I can run this simulation numerous times to get a um, predicting predictive model and to see, hey, do we see something that evens out? So here's our predicted model, and this is all 50 simulations done. So we never had to buy more than 22 boxes. As you can see, it's skewed very much. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's definitely higher on the left end, so it's skewed to the right, and uh, that means more often than not, you are buying less boxes than more. And so um, it should surprise her that it took her 23 or more boxes to earn all five sets. That should definitely be surprising. If the if it was truly randomized the correct way, then the, they, she should have gotten them earlier. And so that tells me that this particular cereal box company probably put a bunch of ones or a bunch of threes and the more rare card was um, probably placed in there fewer times or something funny like that. But that's all we got. So did you, were you able to interpret probability about long run relative frequency? Do you understand the myths of, um, of randomness and how we can extrapolate data that should have never been extrapolated? And can you use a simulation? Can you uh, state, plan, do, and conclude to model chance behavior? All right, I'll see you guys in class.